Hi, welcome back to Daily Planet Goes to India. I'm Jay Ingram in Mumbai. And I'm Kim Jagtiani. Now, you might know Mumbai by its former name, Bombay. It's India's financial and industrial heartland, but it's also home to hundreds of slums. Now, it's a very wealthy city, but many of the people, millions of them in those slums, have no access to clean drinking water. But now some engineers are beginning to change that. A huge pipe brings clean, chlorinated water to the slum. It runs alongside a smelly, fly-infested ditch. It's filled not only with garbage, but also human and animal waste. Many smaller pipes take the water deeper into the slum. Then little pumps and garden hoses take it the rest of the way. And so do all sorts of containers. At this point, for some reason, what began as clean water begins to smell and taste bad. People still use it. It's simply a necessity. But a group of women wanted to fix the problem and looked for help. Enter Erin English and a number of Indian colleges. They soon discovered a much bigger problem. After doing interviews with the women of the community, it wasn't uncommon for them to actually tell me that they thought the diarrheal illnesses were a part of childhood. Of course, they're not supposed to be. English suspected the water was contaminated with bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Contaminated water leads to diarrheal illnesses, which are a major health threat to children. It's one of the leading causes of death in children in developing communities. So they tested with the help of partners from a local college, the Somaya Institute. Water went into sterile bags and then off to the lab. The result? Yes, the water coming out of the pipes is contaminated with fecal matter. So then they did another test to see why the chlorine in the water wasn't working. When the water supply leaves the BMC, the Bombay Municipality Corporation, it's some of the cleanest water in all of Asia. 1.50. But unfortunately, by the time it reaches the community, there is so much contamination in the water, so much suspended organic matter, that the chlorine is actually consumed by this contamination. Here's the problem. All the wastewater in the slum runs in the open. It flows over filth as it trickles towards a drainage ditch. There, it mixes with even more waste and forms foul puddles. And through these cesspools run the clean water pipes. Many of them have holes. For about four hours per day, the community receives water pressure where they have to get up starting at 5.30 in the morning, collect their water for the entire day, and then the water pipes are shut off. So during that period, what happens is a reverse pressure is created, where the pipes start sucking in any contaminated water on the outside. When the clean water flows again the next day, it is, in fact, full of what's been sucked in. In the rainy season, the ditches get completely flooded. Every water pipe is submerged, even the big trunk line. If that weren't enough, there's another problem. The containers used to store water. What we find is those containers are more contaminated than the water that was collected that morning. People, uh, you know, dip their hands into the storage containers to collect the water in a cup. Um, and, and there's very little thought as to what is on my hand will end up in the water. The solution would need two parts. It combines both chlorination and filtration. This invention is solution one. So you pour 20 liters of water into the top, okay, through this filter bag. The bag takes out large suspended particles. And you add six drops of chlorine into your 20 liters of water. The treated water then passes through a very fine filter. It stops everything bigger than a micron. To get an idea of what that means, the human eye can't see anything smaller than 40 microns. So you can see that this cartridge has been used for about a week. You know, we're able to see what it is that we're not drinking, right, because it's being collected in the cartridge. Okay, now what's really important is that once the water has gone into the lower reservoir, is that you don't remove it because it's safely stored in here. It cannot be recontaminated. The Satars are one of several families now testing the device. They've already noticed a difference. It's good. We don't cough now. We feel fresh. Before, our health was bad. But after drinking this water, it's absolutely good. We're at ease now. 
And this is part two of the solution, education. They use sparkles to show how unclean hands pass bacteria. A few handshakes, soon everyone is glittering. The bacterial lesson is well learned. And this bacteria is often on our hands. And we eat with these dirty hands, and they get into our stomachs, and we become sick. And this demonstrates the pipe problem. The purple is contamination. The holes in the pipe make clear water come out purple. Dozens of locals have taken the course and now will go on to teach others. And the hope is that a local will make these units and sell them at a low cost. All this in keeping with the project motto. So hat me se hat means basically health is in your hands in Hindi. Health is in the hands of those who want to become healthier. This project exists only in this slum. It's a little ray of hope, but it's easily dimmed by the size of the problem. Mumbai has hundreds of slums. The number of slum dwellers is believed to be 8 million. Now, as you can see, Kim, there's much more to be done, mm -hmm. but at least that story shows that science can have a significant impact, even if it's not incredibly complicated. That's true, but on a lighter note, we're going to check out Mumbai in a totally different light. Literally speaking, get ready for entertainment Indian-ish style. <laughs>